Okay, today we are going to talk about designing the perfect landing page. So my name is Bill Rice and I'm a part of Kaleidico. We're a lead generation uh, agency and we do this uh, day in and day out. We generate leads for clients um, and one of the fundamental skills that we bring to the table is how to build landing pages that convert, right? Um, and that's our primary goal. And there's really, whenever you're you're generating leads and uh, all the videos that I do, both marketing and sales, we're focusing um, or we're operating within the context of lead, you know, online lead generation, generating, having visitors go to the web, search for things, look for things, uh, potentially see something in social media. That generates the traffic, the interest, the inquiry, and moves them to a website. And once we get them on the website, these landing pages are critical to be designed in such a way uh, to elicit or get that initial inquiry, get that lead that we can then hand to a salesperson. So again, just giving you con you know sort of contextual reference, uh, this is lead generation. Uh, we're going to talk about the page that someone's going to land on after our advertising or even uh, organic search or whatever brings them to the page. So this is We've generated the traffic, they land on the page, and we're going to design a page that's guaranteed to help mo you know, a good portion of these, um, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12% of these people that visit your website to actually inquire with you. So kind of industry standard uh, for kind of just your average website, you know, maybe 2 to 3% conversion um, is, is a kind of an okay standard, but our benchmark is if somebody hits one of our landing pages, our money pages, so to speak, we want that to convert at 10%. And this pattern, this framework will actually achieve that. So a couple things, again, before we kind of get into designing them and actually wireframe it here live, the pattern that we use, let's talk about what are the objectives? What are we trying to achieve with this landing page, right? So first um, is potentially an inbound call. This is one that's often forgotten about, right? It's okay and it should be a core component to actually try to generate inbound calls from your website. And the more and more prevalent mobile becomes, we're seeing people actually um, call in or hit that phone number um, more frequently actually than filling out the traditional web form, right? So the inbound call is often forgotten and we're gonna show you how to incorporate that into uh, our wireframe. Number two is uh, a form completion. So we're gonna get our web form filled out. And I'm gonna show you the difference between sort of the traditional web form, if you will, which is just kinda, you know, it's got some blocks that you fill in, right? Some, some form things, and you got a submit button. And we're gonna go instead, and we're gonna talk about sort of this progressive form concept. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how to do do that in our design as well. So a web form fill. Um, third uh, would be, hey, if these things aren't, aren't working or the person's not really at the stage where they're ready to sort of commit to an inquiry or talking with sales, a lot of times they're doing some research or something like that. So um, kind of the secondary call to action is often um, a subscription, right? Get them on a mailing list. And this usually... Um, has something to do with a lead magnet. And I'm gonna show you how to use that as well. And then the fourth, and this isn't an or, but this is an always, is we're going to get them into our remarketing audience. Right, we're gonna include them in that. Now, this is a little more technical. We're gonna to have to put you know a pixel on here for Google Ads or Facebook, but we always want to remember um, to always have this included so that we get a second opportunity uh, at this traffic. So. Let's go ahead and start our little wireframe here. And we'll take you through designing this page. Okay, so first and foremost is the header. You know, what do you do up in here, this, this kind of uh, primary navigation area? One of the things that we see a lot, you know, oftentimes, of course your logo is gonna go there, that's just kind of a default pattern. But a lot of times what we'll see with folks is they'll just load this up. This becomes a, a sort of an organizational uh, catch-all. Every little division, every little person wants their thing and they think it's important. So they just load this up and it becomes really difficult user experience because there's so much here that it's, 
it's just messy, it's overwhelming, we can't figure things out. Uh, even worse, we see people do these kind of like crazy big old menus up here. It takes up a lot of real estate just because, again, organizationally, people are trying to get all their stuff in there. Um, we're not going to do that, right? So let me get rid of this. We're not going to do this approach. And instead, what you want to do is you want to do really two things. You want to keep it super simple. So if, if it's possible, you only have like three, maybe four things in here. Um, again, keeping it simple for the user experience so that they can see exactly, hey, if I look at that, you know, what can I do here on this website? What should I do? I will tell you from screen recordings and watching the behavior on this, uh, almost no one clicks uh, on this upper primary navigation. So, so starting to unlock or, or you know, um, disconnect the primary navigation from, oh, this is where, this is what people are going to do, or they're going to use this to do the next step. They almost never use the primary navigation. So it's more or less, um, one, uh, sort of a, a, a tool tip or a help to, to get them to a, a right place if they choose to use it. But it's more than anything, a psychological thing um, to show them, much like call to actions, exactly what you can do on this website um, and give them a sense of, hey, I'm in the right place. But we're going to keep this super, super simple. Um, so if I'm doing a mortgage site, uh, this might be something as uh, simple as uh, buy a home, refinance. And then I'm still a big believer in sort of, you know, about us, right? A lot of times people want to know that. Um, again, this can vary for different things, but try to keep this as minimal as possible. And then just to satisfy um, all the, the corporate uh, sort of politics out there is let's give them a hamburger menu, right? And we can talk about mobile later, but I'm just going to give you the context because we're talking about patterns and frameworks here. This mobile menu, um, you can open this up and we use this traditionally um, to, to open a much larger menu, maybe a mega menu or maybe a slider that comes out here. Um, but you can load this up with everything. And people, because they're so used to mobile experience, and again, you can leverage this for your mobile experience, is their use, they know what that means and they're used to using that to dig a little bit deeper. So um, if they do, you know, if you get a user that does want to use this primary navigation, um, you can still give them a lot of information um, within the context of that. I also like to put my call to action in there. So when this thing slides out, um, you know, and again, I, a lot of times I like to use a slider and comes out and puts a bunch of stuff uh, in here. And so I like to also um, keep my call to action in there, right? So whatever that is, I'm going to get that back uh, in there. So let me get rid of that as we move down through here. Okay, next step. Got my primary navigation out of the way. The next step, and this is probably the most important part of the page. One of the kind of interesting research around landing pages and even just sales in general is at the point in time that somebody visits your web page or engages you in a sales conversation, the, the research shows that they are already about 70% of the way to buying, right? They've probably done some research. They've probably got a sense of what they need or what they want, and they're almost there. So most of the people that come to a landing page or come to your website already have a good sense of, hey, I need to engage with these people. Hey, I need this particular product. I need, I need, I need. They know that and they're almost to that buying process. So this whole top area, I want to commit to that majority of my traffic that is ready to engage with me. I want to give them that quick, easy, fast path to becoming a lead. So I don't want to miss that opportunity. And, and what ends up normally happening with the website is I just start start going into my pitch. I'm telling them their benefits. I'm telling them all the things I can do for them. And I'm just loading this up with, with more and more stuff that they probably already processed or they figured out or they've, they've already gotten from some other website or some other place. So what do I need to do in this top area? 
The first thing and the most important is I want my positioning statement. And this orientation doesn't have to be perfect. This is just kind of wireframing. But my positioning statement uh, should be built in this way. Um, I want to say what we do and why we do do it better, right? So whatever your positioning statement is, it should convey to them in one statement what we do and why we do it better, right? So um, Kaleidico, we're a lead generation agency that focuses on driving sales leads or getting you more sales leads. So again, what we do and how we do it better. Um, so if you're doing mortgage, you know, and again, you can get really cliche, um, and I don't really necessarily like this, but, um, you know, you can say, uh, we get you to your dream home faster. Well, anyway, we could have a whole philosophical conversation about that, but mortgage, it can be something like, um, so we got hard money lenders, right? It's like hard money lender makes your loan easier, right? Or we, you know, hometown lender, um, is your community based lender. So anyway, I'm not going to play with that too much. Um, that's something that you kind of go down through your copywriting process. But, but the, the bottom line is your positioning statement should convey what we do and how we do it better. And then the other thing is kind of your secondary. And so I like to make that really big. And then sort of your secondary statement, which I always like to, to do. It's kind of a nice little, again, a pattern that works is what you need to do to get it, right? So this is what we do, how we do it better. This is what you need to do to get it, right? And then we're going to push over to our call to action. And this can be a couple different things. You know, something that you, you see a lot in the mortgage um, is, you know, kind of that purchase refi kind of situation. Um, another one that I, I like is to, and this is the kind of the progressive form. I like to go ahead, actually, before I go into that progressive form, this is kind of the convention you see a lot. Um, and I'm not a big fan of this. And I'll tell you why. So I draw this out, right? A little submit button. So this is a pretty typical convention, but here's the problem. Look at how much friction is here. First of all, if I'm on a mobile phone, it's really hard to kind of type into these little boxes, right? And even if I'm on a desktop, I've got to put my name, my email, that sort of thing, which isn't too bad because now you can often autofill this, but this box is a huge barrier in friction. I've got to think up, what do I want to tell you? How am I not going to sound stupid? How am I going to not make a mistake? What do I type into this box? So this is a huge um, barrier to pull through on this kind of form. So we're not going to use this kind of form. We're never going to use that kind of form. That form is fine on your contact page when people have like sort of a weird thing to ask you about. But when you're talking about generating a lead for your company, you already know what your pre-qualifying questions are are, right? Um, you probably even got them in your script. So why wait and fill out all that box to figure these things out? If you do it in a progressive form, right, you can ask them the question. And then the important thing about the pro progressive form is it needs to be a binary decision, you know, yes or no. And then we're going to move to the next thing, right? So these are sort of fancy radio buttons. But you're going to ask them a question, and they're going to tell you, you know, which option. And it's like a survey. So if you've done social media, you know, these are hugely popular. It's like you're just filling out a survey, and then you're going to get some, you know, on social media, you fill out the survey, and then they tell you something silly about yourself. We're going to replicate that same pattern here. So we're going to say, you know, what kind of mortgage do you need? Purchase, refi, boom. You hit it, you're off to the next thing. Um, you know, how, you know, how much... Do you need to borrow or how much home are you going to buy? And again, we're going to give them some ranges and they're going to pick the right one. The, the nice thing about this, there's a couple different benefits to this approach. One, the, the, the pull through 
is really incredible on these, right? It's through the roof. Uh, the quality of the lead, right? Because you're controlling the inputs. And so you, there's no question as to what they selected. They're not going to mess anything up or type anything in wrong. or You have to interpret uh, anything about that. So the quality of the lead is better. And then the, the quantity of the information is through the roof, right? That little web form, you got one little box and they tell you what they tell you. In this, you can collect, you know, 10, 15, 20. You can almost get the whole, uh, in the case of mortgage industry, you can get almost the whole mortgage form filled out here. So that's the advantage of that. Boom. Now we've taken care of the people that are 70% of the way there. Okay. Um, and so again, just make sure we've got our parts labeled. We're going to do, this is the positioning. Tell them who we are and what we're doing. This is the CTA, right? Then we're going to go into the next session. Okay. So if they're not already there, there's something that's gapping for them. There's something that they're trying to still wrestle with. And so we're going to start to prioritize or create a hierarchy of getting them to the inquiry. So our next step, you can see these are little sections, right, that I'm creating here. So I'm stepping them through a process uh, that, again, it, you know, people are used to scrolling, so they'll do this really fast, right? Um, the next little section, and again, you can get super, this is just a wireframe, but you can get super creative on how you display this. But I'm going to tell you the benefits of working with me and the benefits of the products that I sell here. Um, and the sort of the, the master um, sort of magic here is I want these to be bullet points. So I'm gonna have bu bullet points and these benefits, again, can be, you know, working. Again, you're, you're working on, and if you've seen any of my sales training, I, I talk, uh, a lot about Jordan Belfort's concept of, of building certainty. And I'm kind of doing the same thing on my, on my web page, right? And I'm, I'm trying to build the certainty or give them the benefits of um, working with, you know, you, if this is an individual loan officer landing page um, or an individual, you know, personal page or, or profile or attorney profile. So working with you, um, certainty around the company. So you might have some benefit statements to working with this particular company if this is a homepage. And then certainty, of course, around the product. So most of this is going to be sort of product benefits and why, you know, getting this product. Again, if this is on the homepage, it'll be more focused on the company, working with the company. If it's an actual individual product landing page, then of course these benefits will be more focused on building certainty around the product. The other thing that, that often belongs in here um, is sort of what I call themes, because I, I use that uh, and sort of the, the pass of building themes and testing themes or testing hypothesis. Uh, but these are really sort of um, giving little hints of situations and circumstances uh, that you can be really effective in, right? And so you can also, as a part of those benefits, you can sort of show them or allow them to see themselves inside of this, you solving their problems. Hey, these are some things. Hey, we can do home improvements. We can do debt consolidation. So telling them some of the things you can do um, with this company, uh, if, again, if it's a homepage, or with the product, if it's an individual product uh, landing page. Okay, so those are our benefits right? If the benefits don't sort of bring them in, or even if they say, oh yeah, this is a fit, this is what I need. The other thing that usually causes um, some anxiety or some, some tension or friction is what is the process? So a lot of times, depending on what the product is or what you're selling, this may be the first time they've actually done this or bought this. They may feel a little bit ignorant. They may feel at a deficit in talking to a salesperson because of their knowledge, their, you know, the gap in their knowledge, um, or they just might think it's just too hard, or maybe they, they feel like they're not qualified. And so the next thing we wanna talk about is process. And the goal here is to convey how easy the process is. So even if your process is relatively complex, boil it down to the most basic elements of it. And you want to give them sort of the, the one, two, three, 
right? And, and again, you can get as creative as you want, you know, but this is your, your process section where you're telling them just how easy this is to accomplish, right? A couple things that we're trying to achieve here. Um, one goes back to, to this. I want them to know how easy it is. But then we also want to let them know what to expect, right? And then goes back all the way up to here, you know, is I also want to reinforce the certainty that we can get it done for them, all right? So that's the process. So hopefully at this point, they know the benefits, they know it's a fit, they know they want it. We now also have shown them the process is relatively easy, but some of these people have just come in here just to do research. They don't even know if it's a fit. They don't know if they're going to do this. They don't know. They, they just don't even understand, and they're just way too far away from being ready to engage with sales. So we want to um, sort of take another opportunity to grab them in one way or another because regardless of how you built this traffic, whether it's organic and you did it with content, did it with an email list, you, you bought the lead, um, you, you know, are doing Google ads, there is some level of investment in this traffic. You paid something to get these people to come into your website. So we're looking you know, for a return on this advertising spend, right? So the whole goal of this landing page is get you a positive return on what it costs you to get the traffic here. So we wanna take as many opportunities as possible. Hopefully this work, if not, we're gonna to continue to convince them and we're gonna to try to grab them again. Um, and if they're not ready to do anything like that, um, then we're gonna do something um, that we call in the industry a lead magnet. So we're gonna take a sort of a second bite at the apple here and we're going to tell them, hey, you know, that's okay, you're just trying to figure this out. We're gonna tell you a lot of really interesting things in here and how to do it and how easy it is. Um, and we're gonna do it um, in this, this little ebook that we're gonna provide you. Um, or maybe it's a, a video that we can give you or a video course um, or a, you know, a video intro into what we do. Um, all you need to do uh, is give me your email address. And this is going to help us build, the whole goal here is uh, to build a list, right? And to get them into a longer term lead nurturing campaign. Usually what you're doing is you're delivering whatever this, this offer is, um, and then you're ultimately going to deliver uh, content that's similar to that over time. And this itself, this becomes a lead source. You build that list and you talk to that list, you're gonna have an additional lead source and an opportunity, of course, to monitor, to, to monetize those uh, for zero dollars, right? So those leads coming out of that list are now gonna be zero dollars, right? So that's a reason to make sure you, you grab them uh, with a lead magnet if you can. Okay, and then the last sort of primary step is if you can't get them to do anything, then maybe you can get them to learn more, right? You're going to guide them and help them uh, move on and continue to research. You're going to try to keep them on the website. Um, so this is where kind of your blog comes in. You're going to give them some additional destinations. Um, and it's important for these to be relevant too, right? So if this is a landing page, they come in for a refinance, it's a refinance landing page, uh, then you, and again, you can do this with smart designers and developers, um, you want this content to be relevant. So you're going to talk about refinance articles and refinance concepts in here. Um, if you're doing FHA, you're gonna have some other FHA. So again, it's important to make this relevant so that you get the best shot you can at kind of moving them um, through to the next step, getting them on another page. And then hopefully those pages are constructed in a way uh, similar to this, where you're going to get an opportunity um, for them to become a, you know, a lead or get onto your email list. Then the final thing that we're actually gonna talk about, um, this is often gets left out, but this is valuable real estate as well. And that's the footer itself, right? And so within the footer, there's a couple things that are important to have in here. Um, you wanna have your legal and you wanna have your compliance. 
So this gives you plenty of real estate to do all of the right things to get your legal and compliance right. So again, I like to make this footer pretty large so that we have plenty of real estate to do the right thing um, in disclosing whatever we need to disclose uh, to the client, right? So um, legal and compliance goes down here. The other thing um, that kind of goes right back up to here is again, um, one of the, the top things we wanted to do up here is we wanted to indicate what the lead paths were. We're going to do the same thing down here. And maybe we'll have more. Maybe we'll have a variety of products that are listed here. And so these are going to be additional lead paths. Because maybe we landed them on the wrong page, right? They got all the way through here and like, eh, it's just not right. Maybe something will catch their eye down here that's more suited to what they were kind of looking for. Uh, these are also SEO paths, right? We're helping Google crawl deeper into our site with this. Um, and then depending on what you want to do here, um, you could actually put, you know, one last bite at the apple and get another CTA in there. Um, but again, this footer should be pretty robust, give you a lot of, of, of room, um, allow you to never say no to your legal and compliance department when they say, oh, I need one more disclosure, I need one more disclosure. Give them all the room they need uh, here in the footer. Um, and so this gives you a, a sort of a place to, to be able to do all of those things. So hopefully this has been helpful. Again, this is designing the perfect landing page. These are the key elements Keep the header simple. We're gonna do our positioning statement, grab that 70% of the market that's already ready to do business. If not, we're gonna tell them the benefits of, of filling out that form and moving through the process. We're gonna tell them how easy that process is gonna be for them and that they're going to absolutely get what they need. That certainty is gonna be there. If that doesn't work, let's get them on a list so that we can continue to talk to them and remarket to them. Um, ultimately, if they're just here to research or we just haven't hit the need yet, we're going to try to get them to learn more or maybe see something that triggers them uh, in these lead paths. And that's how you design a landing page that unquestionably time tested will convert at 10%. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. As always, subscribe, drop me comments so that you can ask any questions you can. I'll dig in there with you and, and try to answer those to the best of my ability. And we hope to see you on the next video.